हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल इंटीग्रेटेड फिजिक्स स्टडीज आईपीएस एथरे मु ऑलरेडी प्लस टू सेकंड ईयर सिलेबस कंप्लीट कर सार छि एबे मु प्लस 3 सीबीसीएस ऑनलाइन क्लासेस रो वीडियोस गुडा अपलोड करबी जदी भल लागला त लाइक कर देबो एवं सब्सक्राइब कर देबो जो वीडियोस गुडा मु अपलोड करबी तार नोटिफिकेशन पई एठी बेल आइकन को ऑल रे सेट कर देबो गोटे इंपोर्टेंट जिंसो वीडियोस रो ऊपर एठी जो 3 डॉट्स देखु छ तार क्वालिटी एठी देखो बाय डिफॉल्ट 360 अछि तमे ताकु पढे मते करबो एठी एडवांस रे क्लिक करी तमे रिजोल्यूशन बढे परबो प्रति वीडियोस रे मु पीडीएफ लिंक देबी ताकु एठी ड्रॉप डाउन लिस्ट तो तमे क्लिक करी डाउनलोड मध्य करी परबो पीडीएफ को लास्ट रे एठी जो मोर चैनल नेम अछि याकु क्लिक करी तमे एठी प्लेलिस्ट को जाई मु प्रति वीडियोस को यूनिट वाइज एज पर सिलेबस स जाई की रखी थी तमे सर्च करी परबो ओके थैंक यू हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आज रो टॉपिक रे हमें हाइड्रोथर्मल सिंथेसिस विषय रे पढीबा व्हिच इज अ बॉटम अप अप्रोच फॉर द सिंथेसाइजेशन ऑफ नैनो स्ट्रक्चर्ड मटेरियल्स एंड दिस हाइड्रोथर्मल सिंथेसिस is the technique of crystallizing the substances from high temperature aqueous solutions at high vapor pressures okay so here in this process the temperature is generally kept above 100 degree celsius and similarly the pressure is kept above one atmospheric pressure right now this process is actually a method of synthesizing single crystals that depend on the solubility of the minerals in hot water under high pressure so remember here in this process both the temperature and pressures are kept high so under these hydrothermal conditions that means high temperature and high pressure the water plays two roles as pressure transmitting medium and number 2 the solvent for the precursors so such hydrothermal conditions will effectively bring down the activation energy for the formation of the final phase okay and this can also speed up that is accelerate the reaction between the precursors otherwise it would have been occur only at high temperatures okay now this hydrothermal method will provide the synthesization of high purity crystalline powders which are possessing narrow particle size distributions and along with that good particle stoichiometry okay so the powders which are produced by this process are either crystalline or amorphous depending on the chosen hydrothermal conditions right and this hydrothermal synthesis process requires the use of surfactants okay so here the apparatus used in this process is a steel pressure vessel which is called autoclave and these autoclaves are thick walled steel cylinders with hermetic seal so here hermetic means completely air tight okay so such type of autoclaves must withstand high temperatures and also high pressures for a longer period of time and the temperature gradient is here maintained along the growth chamber okay now the main parameters of the hydrothermal synthesis are as follows number 1 is the initial ph of the medium then number 2 is the duration and temperature of the synthesis and number 3 is the pressure in the system okay now this hydrothermal synthesis can be done in any one of the following three methods so first method is the temperature difference technique which is the most widely used method for the hydrothermal synthesis and here in this method super saturation is achieved by reducing the temperature in the crystal growth zone okay and the second method is the temperature reduction technique where crystallization takes place without a temperature gradient between the growth and dissolution zones so here super saturation is achieved by a gradual reduction in temperature of the solution in the autoclave but however the disadvantage of this technique is the difficulty in controlling the growth process and also introducing the seed crystal now what is this seed crystal it is actually a small piece of single crystal or polycrystal from which we can grow large crystal typically of same material in the laboratory right now the third method is the metastable phase technique which is based on the difference in the solubility between the phase which is to be grown and that serving as the starting material okay now let us see the various advantages of this hydrothermal synthesis 
so first point suitable for growth of materials that have a high vapor pressure near about their melting points that is its ability to create crystalline phases which are not stable at the melting point okay then the second point particularly it is suitable for the growth of large good quality crystals while maintaining the control over their composition and this method is extremely efficient both in case of your new compounds with specific physical properties and also in case of systematic physiochemical investigation of intricate multi component systems at elevated temperatures and pressures okay moving to the next point this hydrothermal synthesis is simple to implement and scale up allowing the control of particle size and properties and it is a rapid technique that can produce high product yields that means high final products now the next point here the particle size and morphology can be controlled by using different starting materials and changing one of the several processing variables and here we can get powders which are formed directly from the solution but however it has also some of the disadvantages which are like the essential drawback of this method is its low control over the nano particle aggregation so it is difficult to remove the particles from the solution without agglomeration then next point it need costly autoclaves for its operation and impossibility of observing the crystal as it grows right moving on to the next point we should have prior knowledge on the solubility of the starting material in this process and as we are maintaining high pressure inside the vessel so there are chances of accidental explosion in this process and finally the hydrothermal slurries are potentially corrosive so here slurries means these are semi liquid mixtures and corrosive means when a material is converted to its oxide state so this is something like rusting okay so these are the different disadvantages of the hydrothermal synthesis now finally let us see what are the various uses and applications so number 1 hydrothermal synthesis is commonly used for growing the synthetic quartz then gems that is your gemstones and other single crystals which are of commercial value okay so some of the gems or crystals are like emeralds then rubies then alexandrite so these types of crystals or stones which people used to wear in the finger ring okay so these stones are also used in many chemical reaction processes you can also see here the ruby crystal is used for laser operation okay then the second one in the synthesis of metal and metal oxide nanoparticles these are used okay now this is what i have taken from one book about the hydrothermal synthesis and now this is taken from another book which has given about the hydrothermal synthesis process in a brief and concise manner along with the schematic diagram as you can see here okay so i advise you to read it also and by combining from both the books you make your note accordingly okay thank you